What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Behind the Savage, my behind-the-scenes series where I take you behind some of the latest content I just put out and tell you a little bit about how we made it happen. Today, I want to talk to you about my documentary that we just wrapped for Poppy and Rose Clothing. Special thank you again to Carly and Angie Nall for having me out, and it was a really special documentary for me. It was the first time I've ever solo directed, filmed, and edited a documentary all by myself, and while it does sound exciting to say, it was, uh, I guess I'll cut straight to the point. I'm excited that it's over. It was a lot of work. So I want to tell you a little about how this film came to be in December of 2019, this last December. Carly actually sent me a super long email. And uh, Carly herself will tell you that she didn't think I was going to read it or thought it was silly, but I actually really appreciated her multi-paragraph, long, almost diary journal of why she wanted me to come work with her, uh, what her goal was for the project, and about really the reason why she felt like they needed kind of a, a mini documentary film. This was a passion project for me. I did not get paid um, tons of money, didn't have a production budget, didn't get to rent you know, top equipment. I was simply left with the things that I had you know access to and and it was something that I was really inspired by Carly's story of how she went to Thailand trusting God walking away from you know the rejection of not getting into grad school or rather being waitlisted for grad school um, for her next step in her career and instead was so inspired by what she saw in Thailand and experience uh, with the little girl named Pagu that you see in the film that her and her mom actually decided to start their own boutique and give back money um, to Thailand as well as improve their city in Birmingham. So overall, it was an amazing story. I felt really privileged. Like I said, this was not the first time I've ever actually solo directed, filmed, and edited something all by myself. It was quite the undertaking. One of my biggest takeaways as a filmmaker from directing this film was really the challenge or obligation that we have to our viewers to make sure in the documentary or mini film format that we are really focusing on authenticity. And so what that looks like is sitting across and directing someone or interviewing someone for your film and wanting them to make sure that they're telling their true story and being their authentic self but also having an obligation as being the director to making sure that the story has a nice plot, it's moving through things, you're checking in on those key life moments, and really kind of this balance of not wanting to f like feed people lines that aren't necessarily words or feelings that they were really feeling at the time, but also doing a good job of moving things along and making sure that you are hitting those keynotes. This story is really about something that you and I can all relate to, and it's this wondering if, if something in the universe, if God has a bigger plan for our lives than just kind of the mundane everyday nine to five job kind of mentality um, that a lot of us struggle with wondering is, is there something more? Am I missing out on not doing whatever my calling I feel like is? And so this is really the journey of, of Carly Nall and, and her willingness to take up some missions work in a season where she had just recently been rejected or waitlisted um, for furthering her career path by going to a graduate school um, in her occupation and really just was soul searching and, and went to Thailand um, with nothing more than a whim of just saying like, I like Thailand and I've always wanted to go. But as you see in the documentary, she goes to Thailand, she meets a little um, girl named Pagu and it really impacts her and, and ultimately they fall so much uh, for this little girl, both Carly and her family, that they decide they actually want to adopt her. And unfortunately, um, the mother ultimately decides to keep uh, little Pagu in Thailand. And so then they're living with kind of the repercussions of, we thought this was going to happen, and all of a sudden, it's not happening. And so what can we still do? And I, I definitely, as a director, um, in this story was just so touched by uh, the Nall family and how that they, instead of just kind of saying, oh, the door shut and, you know, there's nothing else for us here and let's move along with our life in Birmingham, Alabama, and the United States. Rather, it was, you know, what else can we still do? And so ultimately, Carly and Angie um, to make the decision to open their own business and they always had loved fashion you know Angie her mom had uh, been a buyer at one time in her previous uh, you know younger self live and so it was a really neat story to see how um, ultimately it was a story about something that we all can relate to and that's that 
you know, a lot of us are faced with these decisions when things don't work out of, you know, do I just accept that this is the end and there's nothing better for my life? Or do I just keep going and keep believing that, you know, God's will and plan for my life is so much bigger than even what I think is possible. And so continuing to hold on um, for those things in our lives. And so it was just an important uh, piece and story to be told. And I just overall was so thankful to see that, um, you know, come to light. So now I want to talk about a few challenges um, in this film, uh, both some things that I caused <laughs> um, or forgot to do or forgot to press record. And then also, you know, some external things, some things that were outside my control. So the first challenge that we experienced was overall the main venue that we had set up on day two of filming, which was going to do a majority of all of our kind of talking heads, which is just a term for someone like you're watching me now on screen is simply just them talking, but it's the main interview shot. And so um, this venue was a beautiful space. Um, it was this rustic um, kind of brick and it had tons of natural light and it just screamed, uh, you know, perfect venue for a documentary however we got there the day of and this is again was my fault um, being out of town and I, I just didn't do any location scouting which was something normally we would do uh, we would go visit the site we would understand kind of the lighting dynamics we would understand the sound dynamics none of that was done however um, since this was a low budget um, or no budget rather film and as well as it was just me simply living in Atlanta at the time this being filmed in Birmingham so we got there and there was a ton of noise in the room. Unfortunately, the thickness of the floors were not thick at all. They were these wooden floors and there was a whole restaurant brewery um, going underneath us the entire day. And unfortunately, people were singing, people were shouting, people were talking, people were, you know, moving things around in the storage facility down below. And so it created some really challenging um, sound dynamic. I took off running with it. Um, yeah. Sorry. That's Can you okay. hear? You can't, like I see it. Yeah. Like, it was a really challenging setup to do because a lot of the audio was just booming from underneath as well as you had a lot of street noise in downtown. And overall, this was just kind of unfortunately a theme that played itself in and out over and over day after day because we filmed with a lot of different nonprofits and some other locations. And so ultimately, um, we did do some filming as a backup for Carly's interview, which was kind of the main storyteller of this mini film, you know, in actually her basement where both her and Angie actually do their day to day business operations. The problem with that was that it was then again in a basement. And so no natural lighting, which is really kind of what we were going through for in this film because I really wanted to continue to have this thematic of authenticity and kind of the rawness um, of the story come out and that played out on camera for me through using natural lighting and just really trying to not um, do anything that all made it seem like this was staged or factory kind of built. Kind of how I wanted to set up this film as you're watching it was that I wanted you to feel like this was predictable. I wanted you to feel like this was just another girl in Birmingham that was, um, you know, starting a boutique. And I wanted you to feel like that you kind of could see what was gonna happen in the sense that, okay, so she doesn't get into grad school and, you know, now she goes on to missions work and she builds this business, you know, based on being influenced by this little girl in Th uh, Thailand. And then, you know, the rest is history and we sell off into the sunset and everything's happily ever after. But if you've watched the film, I don't want to give any spoilers, you know that this was not how the story ended. And so I wanted it to kind of have this progression of, again, feeling like the viewer, the audience kind of knew what was going to happen, then only to be kind of dropped in the completely opposite direction. Another stylistic choice I made was kind of having these chapters throughout the film. I think this is an important piece to talk about. This was a decision that was made by me because I really felt like I wanted to take you know, each chapter with a different mindset. And whether that's the emotion I want you to feel, um, the visual journey I want to take you on, or just overall the mood of each chapter. This was also a decision I made because we live in this world of 2020, where everyone has really short attention spans. And so I felt like having these one to three minute chapters, it really helped keep people engaged. I got the chance to actually see this documentary be premiered, if you will, in front of a live audience. I think we probably 
probably had, I don't know, 30 to maybe 50, even more people. I, I wanted to support Carly and Angie. Uh, I wanted to be a part of this project as far as this is kind of a special preview night, um, but it was like two and a half hours away. But I made this decision to drive down, sit through the premiere, and then drive all the way back to Nashville. And so it was a crazy like five plus hours in the car um, just to be in kind of a room for an hour. But overall, um, all the points where I wanted people to feel sad, where I wanted them to feel the weight of the emotion of what was being said and what was happening in Carly and Angie's life at the time ultimately came through and there was not a dry eye um, in the audience in some of those moments. I hope that you will go and watch it. Um, it's on my YouTube channel and I look forward to sharing more behind the scenes with you.